Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second episode of FPGA Limerick. In this episode, we will talk about the benefit of Spinal HDL, and we will start by visiting the evolution history of hardware description language. Here is a history lesson, history lesson 101 for HDL and HVL. In the beginning of time, when digital circuit start to emerge, everything was handcrafted. A typical example of such design practice is the ubiquitous presence of Texas Instruments 74 series IC back then. At that time, a large digital circuit was usually composed of multiple discrete ICs like AND gate, NOR gate, flip-flops, etc. And the whole system was often bulky and slow. But as Moore's law settles in, the scale of digital circuit grew exponentially over the years. It calls for a better methodology and automation in design. And thus comes in the hardware description language. The first hardware description language is VHDL. It was developed in 1983 under the funding of the Department of Defense. It was such a big deal at that time, and the VHDL was put an export control initially. As of today, a lot of U.S. defense companies still use VHDL due to their DoD legacy. At the same time, Verilog also emerged in the commercial world. Verilog was introduced by a company called Gateway Design Automation in 1984. This company was later acquired by Cadence. It offers similar design features to VHDL, but in a more concise fashion. Okay, at this point, please allow me to hit a tangent, because people often ask me, between VHDL and Verilog, which one you think is better? And my answer is the following. First of all, most of the time, you probably don't have the privilege to choose. As for those well-established companies, the decision was made a long time ago when the design team was initially formed, and the libraries and the code were created based on that choice since then. New designs will always gravitate toward the same language for the sake of code reuse. However, if you do have the chance to choose between VHDL and Verilog, I would recommend Verilog over VHDL for the following reasons. A. VHDL is a strong type language, while Verilog is not. To use programming language as an analogy, VHDL to Verilog is what Pascal to C. However, since VHDL and Verilog are both intended to describe hardware, every value eventually boils down to ones and zeros. The strong type offers little help besides making things awkward and the modern linked tools can do a much better job without using strong type. B. The evolution of VHDL is lagging behind that of Verilog. Many useful features of Verilog 2001 can only find their counterparts in VHDL 2008. Wildcard and external names are two of those conspicuous examples. C. Both VHDL and Verilog are weak on verification. In the early days, they have to rely on other languages such as Vera, E, or even TickleScript for more advanced verification. But Verilog made up for this by upgrading itself to System Verilog. As a superset of Verilog, System Verilog is rich in features to enhance verification. D. For K-level simulation, Verilog holds a performance advantage over VHDL because it has built-in primitives to describe K-level components, while VHDL has to rely on vital libraries in this regard. As a result of that, most third-party simulation libraries are made in Verilog. So if your design is in VHDL, you have to acquire a mixed language license in addition to your existing VHDL license when you simulate a design 
with third-party library. As you might know, EDA licenses are notoriously expensive. Okay, back to the history lesson. After the VHDL and the Verilog appeared in 1980s, the size of the design got bigger and bigger, and their weakness on verification becomes prominent. So in 1990s, HVL, Hardware Verification Language, were introduced. The first HVL was Vera by Sun Microsystems in 1995, followed by eLanguage in 1996, and Vera later turned into OpenVera, which becomes the foundation of System Verilog. In 2001, the HDL and HVL finally merged into one language called System Verilog. The System Verilog borrowed pages from a lot of other languages, and it supports classes for object-oriented features. And it also has interface feature for transaction-level simulation. The UVM standard is also based on System Verilog, which is the random verification approach by introducing random stimulus and comparing the results with reference model. And around the same time, those folks from the computer science world start to get their hands on the HDL, HVL as well. Now, come to think of it, every digital component, such as NAND gate, NOR gate, flip-flop, can all be modeled as a class. In that sense, the digital design and the verification can all be accomplished using high-level programming language, such as C++. This approach is also favored by system designers, as the system model is often in C++ too. With the system C, everything, I mean everything from all the way from system design to RTL design can all be accomplished using C++ only. That is a brilliant idea by itself. However, uh, or unfortunately, due to the combination of multiple unfavorable circumstances, system C did not pan out. In particular, it failed to win the, um, the hearts of FPJ vendors. As of today, the mainstream FPJ vendors, both AMD and Intel, only accept VHDL, Verilog, and System Verilog as inputs for synthesis. The reason for System C's unpopularity is still up to debate. And uh, here is an answer provided by ChatGPT, and you are welcome to going through them and uh, see whether they make sense or not. And a decade after System C's debut, the idea of using high-level programming language to do hardware design revived. And this time, Scalar replaced the C++, C++ to do the job. And the Chisel and the Spinal HDL are the two offsprings of such an idea. To distinguish them from VHDL, Verilog, or System Verilog, people have coined a tech term for them, HCL, which means Hardware Construction Language. As mentioned in previous episode, for HCL, our bet is on the Spinal HDL side, and here is why. The design done in HDL, whether it's VHDL, Verilog, or System Verilog, is still too wordy. Practically, my experience is that for the same design, the number of lines in Spinal HDL is only half of that in System Verilog. And secondly, the HDL lacks high-level data structure for design. Although System Verilog has introduced some high-level features like object-oriented class or things like that, they are mainly used for verification. The design in HDL is still done with very low-level um, data structures, like always for Verilog or process for VHDL. Again, to use programming language as analogy, 
HDL is more like assembly, while HCL is more like modern high-level programming language. To choose Spinal HDL over Trizzle, the Spinal HDL holds certain advantages like those show here. It has better DRC and it can generate um, multiple um, language, multiple HDLs, while Trizzle can only support um, Verilog. And also, I think Spinal HDL has better simulation feature and supports for better support for Windows. And it can implement sequential logic in functions and it's um, DSP friendly, it has built-in feature for fixed point. And it, it, its library is also comprehensive. Um, that's why eventually we choose Spider HDL over Trezor. And uh, here are some important links for Spider HDL. We'll um, get into details later, in later episodes for them. And briefly, here is um, the synthesis flow for Spinal HDL. The Spinal HDL relies on SBT as the make for for build things, to, to build things, and it will pr produce VHDL, Verilog, or System Verilog as the result. And uh, for simulation, behind the scene, the Spinal HDL will be combined into Verilog and uh, be simulated by Verilate. The Verilate will actually turn the Verilog into C++ and run the simulation in the GCC and the JDK library. Uh, please don't worry about those details at this point, as we will elaborate on Spinal HDL in later episodes. And for the next episode, we will get hands-on for Spinal HDL, starting by setting up the development environment and uh, providing a Hello World ex as example. Okay, I think that's all for today. Thank you so much, and uh, see you next time. And please don't forget to subscribe if you like this channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.